Any questions at that point? Why are these satellites in the area of the triangle? Thank you, Mary. The reason we want to do this is because actually I wanted to do this as an example to prepare you for an interesting result that we're going to discover. Because what you're going to do now is do this for different values of n. And then we're going to try and generalize, whilst it was 3 sine pi and 3 cos pi and 3 when n was 3, can we generalize and find a generic result for the area of a regular polygon that's inscribed in the unit circle for any value of n? And we're going to see that we can do that using our roots of unity technique. So I'm going to obviously leave all this, and I'll leave all this working. And um, what I'll do is set you free to start helping me fill out this table. Because with this table being filled out, we're going to get this interesting result. So we've already done the first row of the table. 3 sine pi on 3 cos pi on 3. Now, I'd like us to fill out the rest of the table. Now, if there were more students here, I'd give you each a row each. Um, what we'll do is, V, how about you do z to the 4 equals 1, and Mary, you do z to the 6 equals 1, and we'll see if that gives us enough to then kind of start to generalize. So have a go, and then I'll come around and help, and we'll reconvene. Yeah? Okay, so everyone's had their chance to work through. So V, do you want to yell out what you got for your result? Very nice. And Mary, what did you get? I got 6 times sine of pi on 6 times cosine of pi on 6. Now, if our other students didn't flake out on us today, I'd ask them what they had. But do you want to guess? Can you see a pattern? What would you guess the area of the polygon would be when n is equal to 8? 8. eight? Pi on 8 cos pi on 8. Very nice. And what would you guess if it was 12? 12 sine uh, pi on 12. Yeah. Cos pi on 12. Very nice. So, I mean, obviously we could do the work to check that. But as, as you probably noticed, the higher n gets, the more effort it is because there's more points we need to work out. But hopefully just from this little activity, it's not a rigorous proof, but what would you guess the generic area of an n-sided polygon sitting in a unit circle is? N, n? sine pi on n cos pi on n. Nice. And we can check that. I mean, we could check it for n is equal to 4 if we want. So V, you had n is equal to 4. What is the area of that triangle if you click, oh, sorry, of that square that you got? Oh, it's two. Two. So the area we know is two. Now, does anyone have a calculator? If not, I can give you mine. Because what is um, four times sine pi on four cos pi on four? And hopefully it equals two, but let's check. Um, two. two. Very nice. So that's a nice little kind of comfort that at least for one of them that's fairly easy to check, we get the right answer. But I can assure you that no matter what n you pick, you will get the right answer. So that's kind of the main geometric result I wanted to share. It's not the only one you can get from Roots of Unity, but it is an interesting one. Um, but there are three final thoughts I think probably worth sharing before we wrap up this activity. The first question I want to ask is, do you think we needed Roots of Unity to get this result? Is Roots of Unity the only way we could have worked this out? Couldn't we have gone, done that directly from trig? Pretty much. So I don't need Roots of Unity to prove this result. I could go back to old school trig and probably get there. The benefit of using Roots of Unity is that I get to make use of some properties I know to get there quicker. So the idea that I know I'm always getting a regular polygon, 
and that they're equally spaced around the unit circle, meaning I know these angles are all equal, lets me draw conclusions that, that allows me to do this math and it's just a bit more streamlined. So roots of unity helps us with this interesting proof, but don't think that we had to use it. Um, is anyone surprised by this result? In particular, the sine and cos. Does that surprise you that the area of a regular polygon has sine and cosine in it? Or here's another way to ask it. Should it surprise you that the area of a polygon sitting inside a unit circle ends up having sine and cosine in it? In it? It doesn't surprise you, why not? Well, because the way the unit circle is, um, is defined, it uses cos and sine, so it makes sense that any part of it can also be explained using sine. Perfect. When we go right back to our sine and cosine, something that hopefully st stuck with you is the idea that both of those curves are essentially taking a point and rotating them around the unit circle. That's all those curves are doing, so it should be no surprise that if we pick a handful of points and put them together, sine and cosine pop up. Final thought, we did this for a polygon sitting inside a unit circle. Do you think we could do it for a polygon sitting inside any circle of radius R? So could we make it even more general? I see Mary nodding. The answer is yes, but it takes a bit more work and that's going to be your homework. So for homework, you're going to generalize this result to any circle with area oh sorry, radius R, and then in the next lesson we'll come and see what you came up with. And that's it. Very good. Thank you for being very good students. <laughs>